Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, here with my co-host, Chad Lutsky. We are currently writing a collaborative novel, uh, tentatively called Planet Caravan. Um, so we will be sharing our writing and all that stuff as we do this. But uh, mainly, this is just, I guess, educational purposes. Um, to Inspiration show and encouragement. Yeah, exactly. Um motivational, inspirational, encouragement, all that stuff, just showing you how we do what we do. Um, and sometimes we don't even know what we're going to be doing next. Uh, so today is pretty much one of those days, at least on my end. I don't know where we're starting. I don't know where we're going. Um, but uh, it's kind of been happening naturally anyways. Like the last two streams, I've just kind of run off on my own while Chad was layering and editing and everything. Uh, good morning, Alec. Good morning, Boggle. Um, and then, you know, but that this is just natural discovery. That's what we're doing here. And that's what every first draft should be. It's just natural discovery. <clears throat> I think someone dropped acid in my coffee and I saw Mona Lisa's head tossed. At the cage. Oh, you're talking about Mandy. I, I OK, I, I get what you're saying now, by the way, digesting that fucking movie uh, from last night. Yeah. <sighs> wild man we had a lot of fun i highly suggest watching uh watching mandy while you're uh while you're stoned i did that I, last <clears throat> I, I was stoned fun. a couple years ago yeah i was not right. stoned just not stoned you're missing out brother you're missing out <laughs> so uh, i i uh <clears throat> we had talked about writing off camera because at this point, I don't think anyone cares. I think they're enjoying the brainstorming and but not waiting for every single word, you know. Right. Exactly. So I did actually write a little last night. I wrote a little this morning because um, we have a new chapter coming up that we brainstormed and then we were done. So I started that. I mined what you had uh, or cannibalized, whatever, what you had written about mm -hmm. the dishes and stuff like that and started that did the the dishes scene um and there's a gap here where uh because we had travis come home but we're gonna have him come home later like he's gonna right. take off and then they're then the, the boys are gonna take off they're gonna go to the barn graveyard thing and have you know some discussion or whatever so everything that's yellow here is what i wrote last night and this morning all right, so that's that's what I'm going to, I guess that's what I'll start off doing. Um, and it, it merely goes over, um, it, and there's a character, we can change his name if you want. There's a character, uh, Cassidy has one friend. It's the only other house he's ever been in before. Gotcha, okay. Because he has nothing to compare, at least this is what I wrote. He has nothing else to compare, like, wow, my life sucks, you know. Yeah. Um, and his friend's name is Shibby. Shibby? Yeah, I, it's, it's just, we, it's like I said, we could change if we want. Shib, uh, Shibby Werner, I think. But I made his dad, I named his dad Cleedy, but I, I, I couldn't remember if you had mentioned uh, a guy named Cletus. And I thought, what if that was um, this guy that they stole drugs was, was from Shibby's house? You know, like... Uh, um, but it's the only, they have guard dogs because I wrote in here that Cleedy has a whole pharmacy in there, mostly cocaine, I think. Um, I know that because Aunt Rita and Uncle Trav talk about it. And sometimes Cleedy comes over with his little baggies and waves them in my uncle's face like a worm on a hook. And him and Cleedy and Aunt Rita will go in the bedroom and we can all hear them having sex in there. I don't think nah. they pay for the coke during those visits, not with <laughs> money anyway. Yeah. So if we, if you want to explore that, we can have Shibby's. Um, you know, like maybe that be the, you know, and then Cleety or Cletus or whatever. Uh, I can't, I couldn't remember the name that you, well, uh, it was Cooter. Cletus. Cooter, Cooter, Cooter. Okay. Yeah, Cooter. It was Cooter, okay. but Cletus, Cletus, uh, was a joke, uh, gotcha. uh, naming the, uh, the second uncle Cletus is what I was okay. going to, is what I was joking about. Cause that was All the right. only thing that popped into my head, but Cooter was the name. Um, okay. I just replaced, uh, okay. I just replaced Cleety with Cooter. That's fine. That's probably um, all right with me. Good morning, Viking. They both have a, uh, <laughs> both their names 
are, are, are kind of reminiscent of VJ, uh, uh, VJJ material, like Clady, Clady, Cooter. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. <laughs> uh, oh. Um. But yeah, we could explore uh, that. Um, uh, and we're up to a point, yeah, where like uh, the dishes are done. And I talked about um, how they don't usually talk to each other in the house. Mm-hmm. Because when they do, Uncle Travis starts, um, he picks up half the conversation, gets paranoid. And he's like, what are you guys up to? So then they try to be quiet most of the time. But even then, sometimes they're like, you guys are being awfully quiet. You know, because he's just paranoid. It, it's it's got it's kind of like that Eminem line. It's like, uh, "Shut up when I'm talking to you. You hear me? Answer me." Sorry. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> or Nirvana's uh, "Take your time, hurry up." Yeah. Don't be late. Uh, all right, I'm gonna read this uh, grave matters section. Um, let's see. All right, here we go. Now, is all that new stuff in the... uh, Hang on. Where'd you put all the stuff you were talking about just now? Uh, It's all highlighted yellow under the Grave Matters chapter. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm sorry. Never mind. Because I was reading, I was like, wait a second. The Sinks of Science experiment, I was like, that's mine, but... Six people in double I make a hell of a mess. Please cover them all. So we're here. To... Yeah. All right. So you did minor adjustments throughout here, even cockroach. Let's see here. Yeah, I didn't go by and clean. So find an error wouldn't be yeah i got you i'm just trying to think of how how i want to say this like a cockroach is stuck or a cockroach sticks to a knife i think i want to do a cockroach stuck to a knife covered covered in peanut butter twitches <laughs> knife roach and all. I'd clip I chucked the knife roach and all into the trash. Not the rest of one that I it seems to notice. Bates and spoons. I know oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we should switch the knife to a spoon. That's my bad. I, I uh yeah, that's that's all right. I just uh Yeah, I like how you extended this one, this part. Um, yeah. Because I think I originally just said the halo of dust around its corpse reminds me of the stuff they suck up their noses. Mm-hmm. I like what you did better. Uh, ew. Dried cereal and oatmeal is uh, really good considering this kid has sensory issues. Mm-hmm. Um, he would find this stuff like exceedingly disgusting. So that's more character buildup without saying, you know, that he's actually like either on the spectrum or whatever. Mm-hmm. It definitely has sensory issues. Chisel the shit off of this spoon. Been there, done that, bro. Uncle Chess. Like. Asshole. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Shh. 
Shibby Verner is such a king name. I don't I don't know. It's probably because I'm thinking of characters like Shimi uh, from a uh, from uh, what's it? Uh, Wizarding Glass. Mm-hmm. He's the the slow dude. Uh, you haven't read? Never mind. Never mind. I, I I mean we could change it. Lately I've just no, been no, no, doing. No, I like it. I'm, I'm just. I've been doing weird think. names like like cake. Yeah. You know. I just yeah. I, I lately I've been liking names. I love that. Names, shit. Like that. I love that names shit. that aren't names. Yeah. Ugh. Sorry, the orgy is getting to me. Especially how I picture these characters in my head. Yeah. Okay, so I was thinking the way we could fit in, since he's supposed to be doing chores today, and they run off to the... Uh, the place that they're going to hang out, um, the impromptu cemetery. I was thinking when he gets back, it can be one of those things where Rita's pissed. He's like, you didn't finish cleaning up. And he's like, yes, I did. I did. We did both. We, we did the dishes. And she's like, no, you forgot to vacuum. He's like thinking like you didn't tell me I needed to vacuum. But anyways, he goes and does the vacuuming as uh, to fit in the, the stuff down here. Uh, this sucks chapter that I wrote. Um, you said you liked the the part with the costume jewelry and everything that yeah. I read to you. Yes. So yes. I was thinking, once they, that. yeah, once we get back, uh, once they get back from there, we can start the setup to why you know. Oh, well, we know why he's leaving. He has plenty of a re- plenty of reasons to leave now. He has no options. But after he cu- after what's his fuck comes home with a coat, um, yeah. So. We still have. How about we have okay, the timeline. Okay, so let, we'll have this scene at this barn graveyard thing. Uh, then we'll have an we'll have a night where you know, uh, get a glimpse of you know what he goes through, like when he when he goes to bed and, and whatever he might have to deal with. The next day, kind of more of the same, or, or we can come up with something, and then that is the day that. Um, and, and also, maybe while he's laying in bed, he's thinking about this cocaine and, you know, how is life going to change? And, and this might change for the worse. And this has got it. This is this can't get better and blah, blah, blah. And the next day he's thinking about it, too. And maybe he's hanging out with Cassidy or maybe he's doing his own thing. And then he's like, I'm going to this carnival tonight. And then he has the, that fun. And, and then when he when he leaves the carnival, um which will be a huge chunk of the book, you know, mm-hmm. just that first night meeting this girl and right. everything and all the fun they have. And then um, he, he decides, you know, when he leaves, uh, by the time he's, you know, probably decides on the way home or when he leaves the carnival, I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to take that, that Coke and run. So he goes back, does it, and leaves that same night. So he doesn't leave tonight. Right. He'll leave like tomorrow night. What if, um, and, and, out- then, and then the jewelry thing, um, what, maybe what that if- can happen tomorrow, yeah, before he even goes to the fair, and then that's just more of a, yeah, more, more of a kick in the pants to do it. Um, yeah. what if, since we haven't, we can always go back and build this up, we haven't built up that he like saw a poster for the carnival or whatever. What yeah. if the very next day? Like you're talking about them at the barn, right? And you want to, you want him, you want Shane to meet uh, Shenna behind this barn. 
what if they literally go what if he goes to hang out after he's like fucking destitute after the whole uh missing costume jewelry he's just like i gotta get the fuck out of here before i get myself beat up you know confronting this man or whatever reason and he goes out there and he finds that the carnival has set up on the property where their little cemetery is Do you like that whatsoever? <laughs> no, because then, then I like the idea of this being the last night, and so he knows that they're both they're leaving town tomorrow anyway. So it's like, okay. but if he's essentially in their backyard with the coat, That's true. yeah, and then yeah, they're gonna okay. find they're gonna see him yeah. or somebody's gonna see him that knows I him. Gotcha. Okay, so you want you want the you want the the barn and the cemetery to be very close. Um. To I mean, I figure, I live. figure, yeah. you know, off across a field through a yeah. patch of woods, okay. something like that, half a mile away or something like we that. We could even have him like uh, laying in his bed, reading or something, and he could literally like hear the carnival music. It's so close. We could have something like that just to designate. No, I meant no, 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 no. The I, graveyard. I'm sorry. I'm. Yeah. My brain is not firing. Obviously. There's two. There's two barns. There's, there's the I, abandoned, rundown barn that they probably shouldn't be climbing because it's yeah. so shifty. And then there's just the um, the four H, right? Uh, kind of you know housing for the, whatever. Dude, they got I'm on the same there. page now. I'm sorry. I could. I don't know what the fuck. I did like a tornado brain fart in my head. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. Literally, my brain was still stuck on the carnival being close, but it's the old rundown barn that is close, and then the carnival is not close. Yeah. We're on the same page now. Oh. And it doesn't uh, even have to be a barn. It could be a semi. You know, a lot of these like the fun house. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 county fair that we had here, the fun house is in um, is essentially in a inside of a semi, you know, like a um, and, yeah, and I think a lot of them are like that. And then it's just it's yeah, it's like a giant trailer, mm -hmm. and they have this fun house inside of it somehow or something. I don't know how it works. It, but it's it's like uh, it's like one of those pop up campers. That's that's how they're yeah. that's how they use those. It is. It is a semi trailer. It has the wheels and axles and everything on it, um, but the the sides fold down. Like when when they're on the road, the sides will flip up. Like the parts that hang out um, mm -hmm. will will fold in, and then um, on the inside, they'll literally have a crank that will extend it outward, and then they'll put posts down behind it. Mm -hmm. So and it's made to be collapsible. So they it but yeah, when they're on the road, it just looks like any other trailer, really. Yeah. And that's pretty much the same thing with like rides like the Tilt a Whirl. Them shits just fold up. That they're built to do that. Um, same with the uh, Ferris wheels. Not not completely, of course. Most Ferris wheels, the wheel itself stays. Um, but sometimes they tear them shits down too. All depends on how many roustabouts they got, um, or tent men, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, hey Lee, yes, I knew it was sarcasm. I knew you weren't trying to tell me that uh, that it was spelled that it was spelled incorrectly i did the internet more for the title today more writing m-o-a-r can't wait for this book to come out it's going to be a wild player because we're going with a publisher this time so we got it honestly if it's anchor or any of the other places i have in mind it's going to be two to three years so if and that's after it gets accepted so that's just normal because they got to build up the the readership they got to you know all that stuff especially since we will be considered debut authors oddly enough <clears throat> hey derek what's up man i have not uh done that card yet but i will today i was in bed when you when you sent that last night, or i was in bed when i read your message last night All right, so what are you going to be working on today? Um, which I was going to I was going to um <clears throat> do this uh continue on this this uh grave matters. Yeah. And do the uh like the barn thing. Okay. Just cuz it's it, I I I picture it as having 
a lot of dialogue. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Haven't gotten there, but I'm hoping some kind of meaningful, touching conversation or whatever can come out of it. Yeah, just get in and start doing it. Something will happen. Something deep. Yeah. And if it doesn't, we can come back. This is off topic. Um, someone just sent me a message. And uh, I was tagged, uh, I think it was yesterday, a reader had bought Broad Street Bastard. And when they showed me a screenshot where it says um, uh, blocked for your privacy or whatever, like it shows like in there where it shows uh, their order, mm -hmm. it's like hazed out. It, it like as though she was buying a porno or something or a dildo or something like that. But it's just my book. Oh, Amazon. And she's like, what kind of book am I, you know, getting myself into? And I told her <clears throat> that I already think that Amazon is, is shadow banning me. Wait a second. Do you mark, do you click that thing that says only people 18 and up for an audience when you upload your books to KDP? If not, you need to go and click that shit because that's for adult stuff. So I'm wondering if that's what's happening. May, I may have for this just because of the amount of sex in it. Because this yeah, is the most sex I've ever had in a book. People get this wrong all the time, man. You're not supposed to. You don't click on that unless you got like nudity or if it's erotica or whatever. I would definitely go check because I, that shit happened to me with uh, with betting. Um, okay. And when I called Amazon, I was like, why are you doing this? It's like, well, your your book is pornography. And I was like. Well, it's not pornography. There, it is not for the arousal of people. And they said, "Well, you click the the thing that said it's only for eighteen and up." And I'm like, "Okay." So I unclick it. I I don't click it. I haven't gotten in trouble for it. But what I was told specifically by Amazon is the only reason you should click on that is if there is pornography in your book. So if it's clicked, that might be what's going on. That makes more sense. Um, but yes, they do also shadow ban based on titles. I know that for a fact mm. because Anderson uh, Prunty had issues with fuckness before he put the asterisk in uh, F in the instead of the U, he put an asterisk. Asterisk, hate that word. Okay, I just changed it on the Kindle. I don't know that if I do that or not. Well, or I, I suggest I... It, I suggest going through all of your stuff and checking if you have that checked. Because if you do, that's that's pornography. Um, that's that's their note for that. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because some guy just sent me a message and, and um, <laughs> what kind of book am I buying? That's amazing. Made, made a suggestion um, and then asked if I uh, or and said, yeah, I, I searched all over for it. I couldn't find it. Yeah, because even when uh, when I had Dastardly Bastard out, uh, it did not sell anywhere near as well as my other books. And it was the one everybody was excited for because it was my sophomore effort. Um, and uh, it was hard to find in searches, all that shit. But when you bought it, it didn't have anything blurred out. Um, and that was back before they put the, that check mark thing there. So I don't know if that that might have something to do with it, but I do remember that happening to me. And it's about the, it's about checking that thing. Awesome. Thanks, man. I'll, uh, You're welcome. Yeah, I'll see what happens now. I hope it helps, man. I really fucking hope it helps. But I still don't understand why they would do that. If the person buying is over 18 years old, you know, or, or give some kind of thing, like, are you over 18 or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But like you only you can only buy it if you have a credit card on file, that kind of shit. Um, yeah. That's what they should do. There's no reason for them to be. But anyways. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I'm going to have to cut from this next chapter, Coconut Smile, um, just because the timeline has now switched to the next day. Right, right. And all that. Well, not not the vacuuming, but for the uh, Coke, the Coke reveal, whenever it's going to be. Um, but it's not right after the dishes. 
So I need to cut some things out of here. Have you read ahead? Because I'm really proud of something that you might not even like. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. I haven't. You're, you're fine. I'm going to tell you about it, though. Okay. There's a, the Coke and a Smile scene opens up with fucking Bethany sitting there with one of those giant Hershey kisses that Hunter stole for her during, during Valentine's Day. And she's rubbing it on her pregnant belly because it has cocoa butter in it. <laughs> she heard that's good for tiger sweat stripes. And then her and Rita are arguing back and forth. Rita's like, I didn't need that shit when I pushed Cassidy out. <laughs> Anyways, I really like it. So if you can make it work, dude, make it work. I just love the That's idea. That's funny. That's so random. I like exactly. it. Exactly. I just, I love this idea of this, you know, coked out pregnant woman sitting there rubbing a fucking giant Hershey kiss on her, on her belly. And then uh, Hunter's over there, like dipping his finger in it. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Uh, it's like very, it's very subtle, but it, I wrote it a hundred percent serious. So uh, yeah. It'll, it, I wrote it's like it a it's like a Lynchian moment. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I, I love shit like that. Uh, anyways, yeah, especially <laughs> the other one said I didn't need to do that when I was pregnant. <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, so good. Anyways, but yeah, try to make that work if you can. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, anyways. Uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna look for it right now. Okay, so here's something. So Shibby, if Shibby's with Cooter and we're going to have Trav kill Cooter, does he kill Shibby too, or are we not going to do that with the you know? No, I don't think it, I don't. Because I was saying there's you know far more to uh, Cooter's operation than just Cooter. So it would be like his family retaliating or whatever, um, or, or what, it, what what have you. But if you don't want to do it now that there's a, a kid involved or for whatever reason you don't want to do that scene, that's fine. I was just wondering if, because I am, I'm not going to lie, and here's some honesty for you. I am kind of getting overwhelmed with like the, the, the timelines shifting. I'm trying to keep track of everything. Yeah. It, it's not it's... that I don't like it. It's that my, my brain doesn't work like this. I'm a very linear writer, like from beginning yeah. to end. And then sometimes I'll write scenes a little out of order, but having a partner doing this, and I think it's good to discuss this stuff anyways, because people, yeah. you know, the stumbling blocks are going to pop up. Um, so here's, here's how I, you tell me what, you tell me what I have wrong. I'm going to lay out the timeline right now, uh, as far as what you just said. And yes, I have short-term memory loss issues. So if I probably get something wrong, even though you just fucking said it. So we have the opening scene. Uh, we have uh, the scene with Cassidy now uh, with the shoplifting. It was a woman um, and the cashier was a woman. And then it was a uh, Mountain Dew bottle and not a Zima bottle. And then we have uh, him coming home and doing the dishes with Cassidy. And then from there, we're going to grave matters um, to give that sweet little moment of them, you know, just a touching moment, whatever, just talking in the old dilapidated barn. Mm -hmm. um, and then after they come back inside, Travis comes home with the Coke, and then we can have the Coke in a smile chapter. And then at the, then we flash to the next day after that chapter. Um, and then uh, the vacuuming and the costume jewelry shit happens. And but he can be thinking all that night the, from the night before, you know, this Coke is going to change things. Maybe it's going to get better around here kind of deal. But then he finds the earring in the carpet and has a break, has to get out of the house kind of thing. He go ends up going to the carnival and then he meets Shinna. Um, then he comes back home with it in his mind that they're leaving tomorrow. I'm going to steal the Coke. I'm going to take off and join the carnival. Um, but the night that he meets Shinna is going to be probably a couple chapters long itself because you really want to get into that, their, their whole connection thing. Yeah. So that's, that's where we're at, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the exception Boom. of when he's laying in bed or whatever, and he's reflecting, I, I don't think that he's going to be like, maybe things will get better. I think that gotcha. he's the only smart one here. It's like, this is true. Things are not getting 
Yeah. This can only go get worse. You know, yeah, down downhill get worse. So he would actually be thinking along the lines also of, I might go ahead and write that section, the, the section where he's laying in bed, because he would be thinking um, also that taking the, well, no, if he hasn't met Shinna yet, I'm trying to, th- no, that's not going to work. Never mind. It, erase everything I was just talking about, because I was sitting here thinking, you know, um, it's definitely going to be worse for Cassidy if I leave him here with the coat. But I don't I don't want to get into that. Like, but there's even I don't know why I'm trying to push reasons for him to leave. He has plenty of reasons to leave. So mm-hmm. let me let me erase that from my head. <laughs> let me get that. Out the, the only other thing that we should do is maybe one more scene or maybe we could do it. Maybe it could be done in the Grave Matters chapter where it's very, very clear um, that uh, Cassidy does absolutely not want to leave. Right. He doesn't feel like he needs to be saved. He wants, he loves his parents for whatever reason. There you go. We we can have that discussion, right? We can have that. That's your deep moment right yeah. there when they're, they're talking and, you know, Shane just brings up, hey man, you ever thought about just leaving? You know, that yeah. kind of thing. So we know it's already on his mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm, that way he's not, people aren't like, why wouldn't he take him with him? It's like, Dude doesn't want doesn't want it. And that's also the perfect place for Shane to leave his note for Cassidy, like the, the phone number or whatever that he's going to be calling to check in with with Cassidy. He can leave it at the, the impromptu graveyard so that the family won't find it even if they go into Cassidy's room. Except for, yeah, I, I, I think you should leave a note, but it, that says more like, I, I, will, I, will be, I will be calling because I don't think he's going to be able to have a number because they're traveling around that's, that's and he has true. no he has no idea where the next town is he's just he's along for the ride i got you so um, he'll use you know pay phone and then we talked about maybe using uh, i think we we touched on this about maybe using uh shenna's voice to get a hold of to try to disguise it as right yes Shib- i remember that shibby but then maybe that won't work because uncle trav knows that shibby right um, went down there but we, we need something earlier that denotes that uh, Cassidy is the only one who answers the phone. And we can have something like... Uh, That's right. You already said that. Yeah. Shane bring right. up... Um, and then yeah, he's Shane, like... Yeah. Shane, Shane will put on the piece of paper, I will call and let it ring only once before I hang up. And then you'll know that the next time I call, it's me. I I'll just to, let it ring one time. I used or to something do that. Like, something like that. Um but yeah, we need we need something short and quick where uh where Cassidy where they holler for Cassidy to pick up the phone and then a little mi- maybe maybe you don't even need the mention in the narrative that says you know they're or maybe something as simple as they're too lazy to even answer their own fucking phone you know that kind of thing. Um, but Cassidy does Cass the kids obviously do everything around this house. It's yeah. just a bunch of coke spoiled adults you know fucking their brains out and getting high and whatnot and these two kids have to do literally everything else. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And the, you're you're right. That's absolutely fucking brilliant with Cassidy being like, no, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't have any problem here. And and of course, Shane, having come from a loving relationship with his mother, he knows how good things can be or they can be better. And like mm-hmm. you said, with the whole build up with Shibby and Cooter is even that other experience he has at someone else's house is just as bad as his home experience. So he has no metric to judge this by. I love that. That's fucking brilliant. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I've already been in this chair for an hour. I'm going to go ahead and take a break. When I get back, um, I'm going to hit, I'm going to tr- try my hand at him laying in bed, going over everything that's happened, even though we haven't written this, you, you haven't written the stuff that he's going to be reflecting on. I'm going to try it. And at least he'll be there as a foundation that we can then rewrite and it'll, it'll be easier. So, okay. I'll be back, y'all. Treat Chad uh, well. Treat me well. Treat treat him well. Re- behave, y'all. Behave. <laughs> Hey, you want to share your screen? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I just thought about that. I was halfway out the door. I was like, whoa. <clears throat> Night bright bike. All right, there you go. All right, gone again. Love y'all.
Okay. It's already disgusting outside. Wonderful. <clears throat> Isn't Hunter in, technically a cousin? Yeah, <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you about that. <clears throat> you um, it, which means this is Cassidy's older brother, right? No, it wouldn't be his older brother. It'd be uh, the other uncle who's no longer in the picture or whatever, because I actually have a part explaining that in uh, Coconut Smile. Hang on. Oh, um, oh okay. Um, <clears throat>
Okay. I got it somewhere coming up, but uh, yeah, because I uh, Hunter, her baby daddy, my cousin, stole it from Valentine's. I I say it somewhere in here, and I can't remember where the fuck it is. Um. I think it's actually from Bethany. Oh no, no, no! It's the uh, it's the part in this sucks. Our vac our vacuum is one of the rainbow one of the rainbows folks sell door to door. When Hunter and Bethany lived with Hunter's dad, Trav's brother Dewitt, Bethany let one of those salesmen inside. Uh, those who pour wine on your carpet and swear for Christ and all his angel friends that their machines will make it spotless by the end of their presentation. Bethany coked out of her gourd. So just an average day for her, signed all the promissory paperwork, and the salesman left her with her new vacuum. I can only assume she was going to use the thing until it got repossessed, but her not being able to pay for it, wait a second, her not being able to pay for it because all the money she used to make, she used to make whoring went to drugs, and then Dewitt died, and she and Hunter moved in with Uncle Travis and Aunt Rita and brought the vacuum along with them. (laughs) Anyways, so there you go. We got a okay. <clears throat> we have an explanation. Okay. Yeah, like that's one of my favorite uh one of my favorite styles too. Magical realism and uh fabulism. So where do I need to put this? What if, uh, what if Bethany, because I was given a little background up here, but then I just scroll down and was reading yours. What if Bethany used to date DeWitt and then now she's, you know, that makes it even more like, what, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> what if she met him whoring? That would be the, uh, that would be, oh, Lord. And then she ends up, uh, ends up with the uh with his son that'd be man oh or yeah what if after the uncle dies that's when she ends up with the like they weren't together before dewitt died yeah (laughs) yeah like they like dewitt and her were a thing and then he died and then and then she started dating hunter and so now yeah. she's pregnant. I'm I'm gonna add that to my section. That uh, th- this sucks. Uh, I'll just change it. So you can set it up earlier if you want, and then I'll just change it. Okay, we might move the this sucks section up now because uh, Hunter hasn't been introduced at all yet, right? Not really. No, no, I don't think we've seen him at all before that. Okay, so we'll probably end up moving that up, and then because right now. As you probably just saw, I'm like, it's like we're out, Uncle Travis, you know, and then and Hunter are leaving. And then, of course, we've got to talk about Hunter or, or right. not Uncle Hunter, uh, but his cousin Hunter. Yeah. Got to talk about him. Okay. So maybe we'll move up when you're done doing whatever you're doing with that. We can move it up to have the. Put that in the vacuum part. Okay. <clears throat> and and to be honest, maybe we can uh, make a chapter out of it, and then we'll move the we'll like the beginning of gray matters could essentially be the beginning of this sucks, and then we go yeah. through the dishes, and we go through the vacuuming and the introduction of the the vacuum, which is hilarious. 
especially considering where they live and they got this really nice exactly vacuum. yeah that's and, that that she, and then she brings it with her <laughs> and then uh we introduce hunter and how they met all that stuff and then next chapter is gray matters okay well that would make it that's when he finds the earring so when he's vacuuming do you want to okay. do the reveal of the missing jewelry right then or um, that was the only issue I had with putting it earlier, or that we had with putting it earlier, because that's when he finds out that the costume jewelry is missing. Well, yeah, we could have it, and it could be in the back of his mind, you know, like when they're the entire talking time. and when he goes to Carnival, and then it could be brought up again as so that, you know, a uh, reader knows that this is, yeah, you know, like he's got this list of things now, you know, I can't do this, live here anymore, they're freaking stealing my mom's, you know, stuff and right. all this now they got this coke and this is my out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, definitely. Let's do that. I like that. Plus, I think um, it gives a little bit more um, tension to in and uh, to the the situation early early on to hook the reader more. Mm-hmm. I'm letting you move the stuff so okay. I don't fuck around and do right, something I'm wrong. Because I am know. not I am not versed in the ways of Google Docs, good sir. Okay, I tried I to copy and paste something the uh, the other day and I fucked something up. Oh. Like control V didn't work to paste. You have to like right click to to do that. Okay, I'm gonna rename these chapters and then I'm going to Okay, so we'll have to talk. This used to this kind of crap used to stress out uh, Tim Meyer out so bad, man. Because I'd have we'd have like sections of like, well, you use this section later. He's like, dude, these and we'd have all these little sections and stuff. I was like, don't worry, it's we're gonna fit it all. Yeah, I'm not worried about it as long as I'm on the same page. That's the, that's the only concern that I have um, because I'm such a linear writer. Um, get from point A to point Z, and then we go back and. Uh... <clears throat> Anyways, but. but I normally, yeah, I normally don't do this much shifting around, but I do have like, oh, I just thought of a great scene, write it, put it down into a section called later yeah. scenes or something like that. Yeah, that's where I'm going to, I think that's, I'm just going to plug in um, him laying in bed. So, all right, so I'm on the, if I'm on the same page, the earring, the lost jewelry has already happened. And my scene with him laying in bed, considering his options is still before the carnival or is it going to be after the carnival the first time he meets shenna it's going to be before the carnival because right. he it's tonight that he's that you're writing the scene he okay. meets her tomorrow night gotcha all right well because we've moved up the vacuuming scene we can have I can mention that and all the drama he's going through in his head. It's like, what the fuck am I going to do? But he does know. So the Coke reveal is after, is now after the earring, correct? Yeah, we're going to do the earring and the vacuuming. Right. And then we're going to do the Grave Matters chapter where the kids take off and they go have this, you know, uh, kind of touching discussion or whatever, this, this deep moment with, with the death of the animals in the barn and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And then, but, but, uh, Hunter and uncle Travis are going to leave probably right now. Okay. Or, um, what's going on here? so I have this whole scene where Hunter tries the coat to see if it's real. Um, after Rita does. So we'll just cut that section. Um, since he's going with, I think I might just work on that. Um, first and make sure that hunter already knows about the coke okay and i'm for now before i move everything up i'm going to uh just bring this uh we're out with the uh, uncle travis's keys and stuff i'm gonna bring that down a little bit or just make a big gap here and then uh write the um intro to the whole like aunt rita's basically saying you guys got a vacuum yeah 
maybe she gives them two tasks and they decide to split it um, just so that uh, not even uh, Cassidy knows about the uh, the earring. I have Cassidy doing something else and then um, Shane can be vacuuming. Okay. Or, yeah, she can have Cassidy go do something entirely different. It'd be funny if she yeah. she sent him to wash the fucking windows and he's okay. <laughs> Anyways, I've, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just the kind of shit that pops into my head. Anyways, uh, background seven or eight. All right, so start to see. Let me read this word for word just in case I miss something. Hunter has to know about the coke, so.
Oh, wow, what's happening? Hmm. You moving things? Yep. Okay. Why were you were you on something? I I moved. I I I can't. Hang on. I'm trying to find it again. All I did was move the uh. This sucks. The old. This sucks. Chapter up underneath the section I just wrote. Gotcha. Okay. I I found it. Okay. So um, no, you're all. It's it's all right. Just making sure I don't fuck anything up when that happens. I'm going to have to get rid of all this where Cassidy runs out to get the baking soda or cornstarch from Dollar General um, to cut the drugs with. I'll put it in later section just in case. Okay. I can still have uh, this part where he's happy to go out again to get the stuff. I can still leave that and just, I don't know. Hang on.
Yeah, I'm going to move all this. Copy and paste instead of. That's an expensive ass blowjob. Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Goddamn thirteen hundred dollar blowjob. You're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> she must got that got got three thousand for real. That shit's hilarious. Sorry. <laughs> and right after you just casually drop the fucking <laughs> it used to be used to be Hunter's daddy's girlfriend. Yeah. All right. This. Oh shit! This family's fucked. Oh, so good, so good. <clears throat> yeah, I have that problem sometimes too, Alec. That's why I always gotta. Uh, I always have something supernatural in the works while I'm working on something like this. Ugh. <sighs>
Did you already talk about how DeWitt died? No, not yet. I okay, because the, la the last sentence, I just talked about it. Okay, I'll go back up and read it. <laughs> he got the train with a running start. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Bitch, you thought. <laughs> that's that's fucking great, man. Uh, that makes me very happy. Where the fuck was I? Coming along, man. It is, it is getting there. I was just telling Shell, not to interrupt you, but I was telling Shell, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This might be one of the best things I've ever written. Um, mm. And uh, to, because we were both good at different things. So oh. it's like we fill in the blanks for each other. Um, I've, I've noticed that you will take something that I've said and you will rewrite it very closely to how I would like go back and rewrite it. Or you will do something that I never even fucking thought of and it'll be perfect. So I like, I, I love the way we balance each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to make for a cool book. And just being honest here, I even told her, I was like, you know, it, it fucking sucks that one of the best things I've ever written I needed someone else to help me with <laughs> it's like, and it. It's no slight on you or anything or it's like, it's like, it's like, I wish I could do what we're doing together by myself, I guess is the best thing. 
that is the best way to put it. Well, when you get two heads, you know, bouncing around ideas and putting okay. stuff out that works or doesn't work, then it helps. Definitely. I'm going to pick up, uh, start writing him in bed uh, okay. after all that shit. I'm going to call the chapter Lights Out for okay. now. See what uh, we do with it. <clears throat> right after Grave Matters.
Hey, so uh, is Uncle Trav or is Aunt Rita, which one is uh, Mom's sibling? Have we established yeah, uh, um, Let's say hey. Rita. Rita? Okay. Yeah, well, just, you know, like maybe she he took her down. You know, like she wasn't, I don't know, she was worth something at one time. But he's always just been bad news. Yep. Oh, when you get down to the last bit of what you're working on now, mm -hmm. um, I know it's kind of a run on with overuse of commas and things, but I really wanted to set set the tone for like how anxious and upset he is about this whole thing. So that entire final paragraph is just one long running sentence with a commas uh, okay. to kind of denote what it, where his mind's at. It just kind of runs. Then mom's voice in my head telling me to calm down, assuring me it's not so bad, followed by visions of me standing beside her at a flea market as she picks through costume jewelry. One of my arms wrapped around. Anyways, you, you'll, you'll get it when I when you get down there. Yeah. Um, I like how it flows. Anyways. All that and I only wrote a page? Fuck's sake. Yeah, we're sitting there. I thought I just did the word count. I thought we'd be have more, but we're all right still. We're at, we're almost at eight thousand. But that's fucking great. 
Yeah. Honestly, I thought we were still around six or so. <clears throat> well, we were at seven this morning. Ah, I had no idea. Um, the last time you updated me, we were like 5,000. So. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if we keep up this pace, we could be done before summer is done. Yeah. I'm still here. Okay. Did you go black screen? Yeah, you went okay. I didn't even notice. What do you know? I just did a, a search for Broad Street Bastard and first thing that pops up. After after I did what you said and I fixed that. that that'll that'll do it. I'm I'm happy for you, dude. All right. Yeah. Lesson learned. Yep. That's all we can do, man, is just learn from mistakes because they, they don't they don't tell us this shit. They they don't tell us damn near anything. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, really, they should have some kind of algorithm or something that has like a kids side, kids Amazon or something. I don't know what, but they need to do something about that that option. Mm -hmm. um, because they need to say they need to have like in parentheticals or something that's like pornography, erotica, or whatever it might be. They yeah. need to have something in there like that. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, it's too as as of now, it's just too broad. Like my stuff is yeah. not. No, no pun intended. Broad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but, even catch it yet. You know, it's not a, <clears throat> it's not erotica. 
Hey, JB. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. I've been over here working. See what the masters of imagination are getting up to. We are we're 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 booking like a turkey. I got two pages written. Chad's over there layering and fixing and doing hit working his magic. I like I like how you changed that better than to as if I should have known better than to leave it with such a responsibility. That works so much better than what I had. I can't even remember what I had, but that works better. I knew I wasn't happy with it. And that's the mm -hmm. shit I'm talking about. That's the exact stuff I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's like you always have the right thing, the right way to rewrite something. So not always. <laughs> well, so far you have. So, uh. 
I'm gonna take a break. Uh, okay. Gotta take uh, my oldest to go see Barbie at three. We're nowhere near that, so um, because it's only eleven. It's about to be eleven thirty here. Uh, I got a, I got probably another hour in me, and I am gonna go take a break. I'll be back.
the heck is a bobble? <clears throat> Bobbles? Bobbles, did you mean? A bobble? Yeah. <clears throat> Lord, y'all been staring at a black screen and a chair this entire time. How dare you?
Dude, uh, you got the word baubles in here. Did you mean baubles? I don't even yeah, know. I, I did. Oh, yeah, okay. I meant baubles. B-A-U-B-L-E-S. I just fucked up. All right. I, I Googled that and I was like, oh, this is supposed to be like a southern thing. <laughs> no, it's it's supposed to be baubles. This is my how my brain works. Word vomit, all that good shit. I know the rules, doesn't mean I always follow them.
am I going with this? I like this extended metaphor. I just got to figure out the rest of it. Hey, Solvents. How you doing? I, I didn't realize I was on mute. I got a cool... Uh, <clears throat> I was wondering. I got a cool something over here, too. The... Uh, Symbolism, I guess you'd call it. That's funny. We're both working with metaphor right now, or sy symbolism, whatever you want to call it. it. Says the grave barn is about a half mile walk through a small patch of woods that opens into a field. The barn sits in the middle of an old gray wart, ready to fall. <clears throat> it sits in the middle like an old gray wart, ready to fall. The accompanying house have having been having burned down years ago. The only thing left is the open cellar where toads get trapped and hop around their whole lives, make babies, then start the cycle all over again. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is what I just did. Hang on, let me find it. Mm -hmm. So he snuck after, he's laying in bed, he can't get to sleep because he's still pissed off about the missing jewelry. And uh, uh, he goes out into the, into the kitchen to get a, a cup, a drink of water while everyone's still coke binging and all that stuff. Um, it's like all the while my ears are cocked like a dog's listening, waiting for the slightest hint that someone's heading my direction. I kill the water in a three, in a single three swallow chug. As I set the cup down gently without a sound, my eyes track to the coffee table and the white residue dusting the surface. They must have snorted a grip before they moved on in, moved into the bedroom because there's a lot of it left behind. Not piles, mind you, but swipes and loose trails as if someone tried to wipe it off with their hands. The brick is nowhere to be found. They likely have it with them and won't take their eyes off it as if anyone would think to steal it. You'd have to be you'd have to be big dumb to look at this double wide and think to yourself, hey, I bet they have a stockpile of expensive drugs in there. Yeah, you'd have to be an idiot to think that. But what if someone knew it was here? What would Trav and Rita do if some thief did break in and steal the coat? Uh, steal the coat Trav stole his own damn self. Not like they would call the cops. Hello, police? Yeah, someone just robbed me of the cocaine I done stole from someone else. Yeah, yeah, we'll be here when you get here. Want us to handcuff ourselves too? Sure thing. Be ready when you get here. And just like that, I'm thinking the unthinkable. Just like that, seeds are sprouting in my head, blooming into irrational flowers. Pretty yet unbelievable. I'm watering them all the same, though, and pretty soon I'm looking at one hell of a garden. Surely there's someone out there that had paid good money for a bouquet, an arrangement such as this. I plow the field and undermine everything. What do I know about selling flowers? Not a damn thing. I know, what, I know what they look like, even what they smell like, but I've never pinned a corsage on my date's dress. Mm, nice. <clears throat> so both of us are working with shit like that right now. It's interesting. All right. Um, I think I am done. Okay. Uh, my back is screaming and I got to get off it before I take a, uh, take the oldest to the movies. Cause it's a hour drive back and forth into town. Uh, I also got uh, some reading to do. This uh, this book by this Chad Lutsky fellow. Yeah, man, you need to start that, dude. <clears throat> I, I was I was supposed to start it last night, but I got high. And uh, what? Oh yeah, I watched uh, Mandy with everyone. Got high and watched Mandy. Hmm. And then by the time I got back inside, I was too tired to do anything else. But I got to start it today. Uh, probably have it done tomorrow easily but it's still going to be a couple i have an entire week worth of videos coming out so it is probably going to be at least another week before i get a review up um probably next wednesday is what i'm thinking but all right um so good work today uh yeah it is chugging right along i don't know how much we've added but it's i mean i got another looks like three pages i added in total i not node we're at 8,911. 
So, okay. So I added about another, I don't know, probably about 400 to your, I don't know how much you've added, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, word count doesn't really matter right now. Because it'll either likely grow or get smaller by the end um, as we continue layering and shaving and compiling and all that shit. But I'm very happy with this. I'm yeah, very, very happy with it. All right, man. Um, uh, for everybody else, I'll say goodbye to you off, off live. But uh, um, everyone else, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are coming along. It is going really, really well. Uh, and uh, we will be back. Let's see here. What's today? Monday. We'll be back tomorrow. You're good for tomorrow, right? Yep. All right. So uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m., same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, but until next time, all hail the chair. Doom, doom, doom.